When I got into vlogging, the ultimate goal was never to just make pranks. The goal for me when I got into YouTube was to share my honest and true story. I wanted to share the story that I'm going through. The last couple years for me have had like a lot of awesome moments where I've been able to share some of the highlights of my life. But along with that, I don't wanna shy away from some of the harder moments that I go through. And I'll be honest with you, it is really difficult for me to open up on camera with those vulnerable feelings, but it's important to me that I'm showing the full story because that was my goal in the first place. So I have been filming how I've been doing over the last couple weeks, different moments throughout the process and trying to make the most of this and understanding how it's helping me and why God has me in this season. And I wanted to share a couple of those moments in a vlog to encourage anybody who's going through those feelings in those moments right now with me to know that you're not alone, that better times do come, but you have to pursue it, even when it feels like the world is caving down in on you, and that you're gonna be okay if you lean into God. Uh, it's the middle of the night. It's like one o'clock in the morning. I just figured I would share um, kind of where I'm at. So I don't know when I'm gonna put this out, but I, sometimes I'm fine, sometimes I'm not. I guess it all started when I took Cake up to the Ed Sheeran concert the other day. But she really took me. We got there and uh, the conversation that we had in the car was like a very work centric and our relationship lately has just been like, it's, it's been weird because it's been really like connected to work always. And I hated that and I think she did too. And so I remember being at that concert like, I don't even want to be here. And that sucked. Cause she's like my best friend. And so I told her like, I, I think we need to change something up. And she came up with the idea uh, to have a reset. It just takes some time to ourselves. And uh, I respected it and I agreed with it and it was a mutual decision. So we hung out a couple more times. We went, uh, we, we celebrated our anniversary together. Um, and that was awesome. It gave us a little bit of time to figure out what it is and what it looks like. And we had the most amazing time at our anniversary. I mean, like, like she's the funnest girl alive. Like, I can't even explain to you how much she's my best friend. We just share so many memories and it's just so special. And she's so beautiful. And when she smiles, it's like, I've never seen anything like that. When she lights up, it's like I hit the jackpot. I feel like a winner just cause she's smiling and I got to be part of it. She just is awesome. We had the funnest time. We just went to dinner. It wasn't anything special, but just being with her is special. And I've never really been in a relationship where I feel so secure. And like, I know every time we're together, it's just gonna be that awesome. So that night we went to dinner and after dinner, we, we really figured things out. We came home and a couple days later was like the last time I got to see her. I could never say goodbye to that girl. And it was the hardest thing ever to say goodbye to her. I showed up to her house. I went upstairs and we hung out for a second. It was really sad. She had made like this little charcuterie board. She's so thoughtful, like literally the most thoughtful girl I've ever met. She makes even horrible tragedies, horrible things like that so fun. So she set us up this little, like she called it a goodbye charcuterie. And uh, we sat there and we talked and then she had some cookies and, with Oreos baked in the center, just sitting there waiting for us. And so we did that for a while and we thought about watching a movie and we ended up just hanging out, just talking to each other and messing with Corduroy. We freaking danced in her kitchen to our song. And then after we danced in the kitchen to her song, I walked her outside. She needed to check on Corduroy or make sure that he went to the bathroom. <laughs> and I want her to be safe. And I remember she said, don't forget me. That threw me off. Cause I could never forget a girl like that. I could never forget that girl. 
and she asked if we were gonna be okay and and I, I just like I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that that is the girl I am meant for unless God just comes in and just completely like like I that is the most amazing girl I've ever talked to she's got the sweetest heart she is so loyal so loving so funny and she doesn't even mean to be she's amazing and I, there's no way I'm gonna let her go and so we finished dancing and uh and I remember hugging her one last time thinking to myself this is gonna be the last time I hug her for a second We prayed together right before I left and just prayed that God would use each, use each other in this time and that he would do an incredible thing through us and that he would make us stronger through it and that he would protect us each. And she said something that messed me up. She said, what if something happens to you while I'm gone and I didn't get to be there? And she's the queen of these situations that she comes up with in her head and it's part of the reason I love her so I just reassured her and told her that it's in God's hands to be honest with you I felt the same way like I want to be there I want to protect her I want to be that guy so it's really tricky for me it's really hard for me right now to be that kind of dude when like I'm supposed to be just like stepping back and and I don't even know what this is. I, we just both know we need it. But I know it's all in God's time. And I trust that. My game plan is just to continue on and to make content. Um, to give God control and just to like, believe that he's got a plan on all this craziness. It's like to get close to God see what he's trying to say, to see where I can grow, where I can do better. So that's where I'm at. After that night, I took some time to reflect. I got alone with God, and he showed me that in every circumstance, he can be glorified and you can be encouraged. There's a huge difference in my opinion between happiness and joy. Happiness is a feeling that comes and goes, but the joy of the Lord is our strength, even in the hardest of times. So that next morning, I opened a card that Jacob gave me and I started a new chapter. When I'm at my worst, it's putting things into action in my own life that really helps me get going again. And I want the same for you, whether that's working out, it's painting, it's poetry, it's journaling, it's calling a friend and reminding them how much you love them, it's going out of your way to help the homeless, whatever it is. I find that when you put positive in, you get positive out. And when you're not getting positive out, the place you start is with putting positive in. And for me, that's working out being in the sun, being in the boat. It can be really challenging to know what to do in times like this. And I feel like where I was reading today, Jesus was pretty upset. He was on his way returning to Jerusalem and it says he was hungry and noticed a fig tree beside the road and he went over to see if there were any figs on it, but there were only leaves. And he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the fig tree withered up. And then Jesus told him, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and you don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can say to a mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. I think those two things kind of happen in tangent of each other. I think it's super encouraging that God says, with faith, anything is possible. But I also think that there's something to be said for, if the tree of your life bears no good fruit, it withers. They go hand in hand. I guess that kind of just backs up what I've been thinking, which is that when you're going through heartache, or hard times in general, focus on bearing good fruit blessing others, bettering yourself, pruning back the dead branches that could be withering you so that the tree of your life produces good fruit, so that the people's lives around you are enriched by your existence. I think within that, with faith, 
Anything is possible and with God you will move mountains in your life you never thought you could. I don't think I would have gotten this mentality if I hadn't worked out today. That's not to say that I still don't have like a pit in my stomach. I've never really publicly gone through stuff like this so I don't really know how to share it. So bear with me. This is fun, I think we should head back to the house. I wanna work on a song. As I was sitting here, I got the idea for a melody and I recorded it and I wanna see if I could uh, work on it a little bit. I got home, I got in the shower, and these lyrics just started coming to me. So I decided to write a part of a song that I've already been working on. I'm just gonna work on it for a second and then maybe show you a little bit of it. The verse that I've been hanging on these last couple days has been 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures every circumstance. It's a special kind of love that can stand the test of time. And through the last couple years of knowing K-Cup, I've changed significantly, but my love for her just never has. It's the one thing I feel like my past, my present, my future will always have in common. Because the truth is my feelings for her are never going to change. I will always be in love with her. Just like 1 Corinthians says, love endures every circumstance and I'm not going anywhere.